Andy Warhoff once said, everyone's going to get the 15 minutes of fame, which got us in a disorder office thinking about what are the strengths and the weaknesses of someone becoming an overnight media personality. Now, I'm going to have a chat with Pete Bennett, who you may remember won Big Brother back in 2006. So, Pete. Yes. <laughs> when you were younger, before the days of Big Brother, yeah. what were your passions and what were your future plans? Oh, um, I wanted to be a bus driver, actually. When I was a little boy, I wanted to be a bus driver. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Just can imagine like, riding that bus around London, you know, getting money, giving change, getting angry. What about music? Oh yeah, I started making music when I was 14. Mm. Actually, my mum met a geezer who was a sound engineer um, at, when I was eight years old, and he taught me how to do Cubase, you know, mm. like, um, taught me how to um, pr program music. So I, I, um, I got really ill with Tourette's at 14, but my cure was to write music from the age of uh, 14. You know, I took myself of all the medication, started writing mm. music from then. So I still make e electronic music now, at home, you know what I'm saying? As the daddy. Look, a pigeon, quick! Come on, then. <laughs> Come on, you want some food? No, oh, there you go. Go on, eat it. <laughs> it's great. No, it's nice, I swear. There you go. <laughs> go on, feed the pigeons, isn't you? But the what? biggest thing you're known for was yeah. probably your stint in 2006. Uh, what? Yeah, well, in Big um, Brother. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I did do that, yeah. You look, I loved it. I did do that because I obviously mm. needed to, to uh, um, help Tourette's get the, mm. get the awareness out. And um, sorry, I just love these pigeons. <laughs> Come on then, two pigeons, yes, two pigeons. Ah, ah, ah. Anyway. Um, so uh, what was the main reason you did it? Was <laughs> it to raise your Tourette's awareness? Raise Tourette's awareness, because yeah. everyone was, um, there was no there was no one out there who was uh, bigging up Tourette's. There was mm. kind of like a, a, a negative um, look on it, like lots of, lots of documentaries. There was quite a lot of sad documentaries mm. with like, with um, kids going, oh, I'm really sad, I need to take loads of pills to be more normal, mm. whatever that word is, um, in, in life. And I was like, that ain't right, because I was quite, a, I was quite a, um, happy, I uh, quite, you know, I was happy, happy twitcher, you know? Yeah. I mean? So uh, You I sort of to, embrace it, don't you? Oh, yeah, I do embrace mm. it, because it's, it's, to me, I found it quite a funny illness, and I, I got through it by making people laugh with it, you know what I mean? So, um, um, I, I thought, like, I'd be a really good ambassador for Tourette, so I, I thought mm. I wanted to get the message out there, get people learning about it and put a really positive message out there about people with Tourette's can, mm. can still leave, live normal lives. You know what I mean? So you went through in 2006, but am I yeah. right in thinking that you actually auditioned a couple of years beforehand? Oh, I did, yeah. Well, I auditioned a couple of years beforehand. Mm. Um, it was, it was um, yeah, but, that, but at that stage I was very un, um, un, um, confident. I remember mm. going to the um, audition process and getting really far, but man, I was really unconfident. I still couldn't twitch openly in, in, in front of people. And I remember being there and my Tourette's was um, shy and I couldn't twitch mm. and I couldn't be open, I couldn't be myself. So it was really good that I didn't get in that year. Ended up uh, having a, I, I, I think I had two years of going through some weird mental, like, um, regrowing um, because Hey, I took a lot of acid, and uh, mm. I actually, <laughs> I actually lost my mind a bit, and I saw my best friend die in front of me, and you know, what's that? What was that when you have turn? You see something dodgy, and then you, it's sort of, oh, an epiphany. No, it's, well, I did got, I got that late. <laughs> what was it called again? Uh, Deja vu. No, I won't. I have that all the time. <laughs> I actually have that quite a lot lately, but I can't remember what it's called. When you see something really shit happen, and then you go through, <clears throat> what's that word? Come on. What's that word when you see something really bad happen and then you go mental and then and then you um uh, acid. Cla no. <laughs> placid? Did you say acid? <laughs> That's what I said earlier, but no, no, we've already gone over that. But anyway, I sort myself I don't out, know whatever what that it word was. Is. But I, I sort myself out. I've really sort myself. Oh fuck it. Just just wrap it. Just pretend that I went through shit. Yeah. And then I and I and I, and I sort myself out and I and I and grew was, the confidence to go on to Big Brother Seven because I had like an epiphany, as you yeah. say, um, from, you know, um, through my, well, I had lots of like signs and I got visited by angels and stuff, you know, uh, telling me And they me said gonna you're gonna win, win. Gonna win Big Brother 7. We, yeah, it's, it's true. Because that's what I was going through at the time. Yeah. Yeah, I was complete, you know, completely out there, you know, I was um, <laughs> quite a trippy little, <laughs> little bastard, but now, you know, I'm sorting myself out now. It's great. So when, like, when um, you went in there in 2006, <laughs> yeah. and as you say, you've always been very honest yeah. about your drugs and your struggles with Tourette's and yeah. how you try and make it a positive thing. Mm. I mean, was there any time you were in there and you were like, shit, I'm in too deep here? Yeah, I mean, I was in too deep because I, I was like, you know, 
I got in there and obviously um, I knew I was going to win because of, mm. of what, I, what, what of I experienced, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, read my book, you know all about it. But um, I remember having a, a, a really bad week thinking, my God, what if everything I've seen is a load of shit? You know mm. what I mean? So uh, it was really scary, really scary to, to, to have that um, put against me because I was thinking, if it's all a load of shit and I don't win, then all that, all that, um, all the visions I had about mm. heaven and um, wouldn't be true, and yeah, yeah it would, would all be fake. In your like in the summer of 2006, I mean, you were on things like the Jonathan Ross show. Like, how was it going from being yourself to then just coming out, everyone knowing who you are, a, a huge fan base, and then being on prime time television with one of like the country's best interviewers? Uh, well, I, I, you know, in a way, I kind of um, it, was, it wasn't really anything. I didn't really find myself. I loved it. I did really yeah. love it. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I was really up for it. I knew exactly what I was getting myself into, and yeah. I knew what I was going to. I knew what to expect, and I felt. I felt like that's what I really needed. I needed to be. I needed that platform to keep spreading awareness mm. and, and stuff. And uh, I remember giving all my the charity money to the Tourette Syndrome Association. It was a uh, four hundred grand I gave. Them. Oh wow! And um, and uh, that sorted out all the all the uh, all the kids with like camps and that, so they can mm. go meet each other and. Yeah, it was great. And lots of kids come up to me and they're like, Pete, man, what are you seeing? I'm like, all right. And he goes, I'm like you now. I was like, oh, great kid. Wankers! <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, uh, <laughs> cheers, mate. Thank you. <laughs> so basically, um, I felt like I could be myself outside, outside. I could mm. be myself. I'd go around the street, down the street, say wankers to everybody. And I wouldn't get beaten up like I would, I would previously. Yeah. The fame thing, I found, I found the fame thing really hard. Because yeah. it, it just felt, it felt really fake to me, like the whole thing. I got really quite downhearted. I felt this is going to be great. I came out mm. on top of the world, but then I just suddenly I was I was kidnapped by the media and like you know uh, I, wanted, I wanted to go that way, but I ended up getting taken that way, and I didn't want to go that way. But I had to, oh, and, and it made me really sad because. When did you realise <laughs> it wasn't for you? Was it an overnight thing, or did you just instantly know like, hey? This, I think it is, this for, is it, for it is for me, but it's it's I'm not I'm not the t typical um, celebrity, you know. I'm not that mm. kind of I'm I'm not that kind of person. So I don't I just don't find it. Oh my God! You know, I, mm -hmm. I think it's definitely important that I am uh, a, a known face for for a lot of reasons. But I'm not like just into myself. I'm I'm, I'm here to like help. You know, I want to help people. You know mm. what I mean? I like that's why I do charity work a lot, and I like to keep myself. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you know what I mean. Mm, um, so the major took you in the completely the wrong direction that you wanted to go. Yeah, I wanted to get. Well, honestly. I wanted to go, so go back to my band, Daddy Fantastic, and you know, I got, I got forced into another direction, which was hard, really hard for me, because, mm. you know, it ended up breaking a few people's hearts, and I felt guilty. And yeah, I mean, where, where have you been <coughs> since in the nine years? What, what were the highest points <sighs> of your instant fame? <coughs> this is the highest point <coughs> right now. The disorder. Yeah, man. Disorder in up, choking <laughs> on chicken. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> But yeah, um, that's that really. <laughs> I'm really. I mean, the fame, I, I like doing TV shows. Recently, getting chased by a load of um, wild dogs with money on my back. Oh, the hounds. That was pretty fun. Yeah. That was that was a highlight. That was that was crazy, man. That was really good. What were your lowest parts? Lowest parts? What I've been of the yeah. past nine years. Oh, I think like well, obviously, yeah. I, I think the lowest parts has got to be when I was uh, completely. Um, addicted to Kevin and stuff like that. I mean, so uh, having having an addiction was, was really hard for me. I, you don't even you don't really realise that you are actually addicted to something uh, until it hits you in the face, and then yeah, suddenly you, you know you just oh my god, man, like I couldn't get off it. You know what I mean? So it's, it's well, coming not, back to the here and now, yeah, yeah. Future plans for your career? Where can we next see Pete? Oh man, you know what? I don't know, you know, because I'm, I'm I've got loads of like fingers in pies. I do. I do music at home, make electronic music as the mm. daddy. I want to do that. I want to get out and do that. But also, I want to. I mean, I'm doing acting recently. I'm yeah. Doing, I've been in a few films. I mean, uh, maybe. Also, I like to. Uh, what else do I do? Oh, yeah, I make puppets. I do comedy as well. I'm yeah. Doing stand up comedy uh, every Friday for Ke Pete's Comedy Caper. Where's that in going, Brighton? Where it is in Brighton, but it's going. It's in London now for, uh, for like, from January. It's going to be all around London, me doing oh, stand up. Sweet. Why am I still here? It's weird, isn't it? Ten years later, people still know me. People still want me on the telly. I'd love to yeah. get back on the telly because every time I go on the TV, people laugh their heads off. You know what I mean? I really love making people laugh. It's a big thrill for me. Like, because mm. um, laughing is 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 is, is like, man, this 
This country is shit. I'm not not be horrible or anything. So you need. You, I just love to cheer people, like you. people up. Yeah. You know, like, have Definitely. a bit of a laugh. Don't take life so seriously. Have have a great have a great time. You know. Uh, yeah, so I remember when I was 19, I thought I was destined for Big Brother. Oh yeah. <laughs> No, there's still loads of... Um... I have my eviction outfit and everything. Yeah? yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Don't do it, man. No. Do not do Big Brother. <laughs> I'm telling you now, ten years later, they still ask you questions about Big Brother. Like us? Yeah, like right you now. now. Thanks for that. <laughs> you know, it, never, it never leaves you. Apparently, like, you know, my name's Pete from Big Brother now. Yeah. And it's not, it's Bennett. It's Bennett, all right? <laughs> Bennett! My name is Bennett! I am a Bennett! <laughs> Thank you! Ten years later. And now you're with Disorder. I'm now, I'm, is this a magazine for people with disorders or is it the, because that's why you got me here, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, I yeah. thought so. Ah, <laughs> uh, here comes the fans. <laughs> no pictures, please. Absolutely no pictures. No, it's fine. No. Hang on, carry on. Carry on. Oh, I wish, I wish. <laughs> In the old days, they would, they'd be away with me. No one really knows No, me. not now. Ten years down no the line. No one wants no to know. No one cares. Hello. <laughs> Hi, she likes me. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, come here then. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking to me today, Pete. That's okay. Was that awful? It was awful, no. wasn't it? It was really bad. <laughs>